I suggest that we now continue here and take agenda item 8, European Programme of Work 2020-2025, United Action for Better Health in Europe, Monitoring Implementation. You can see the relevant documents on the screen there. I, yes, there are the, they are. Following the adoption at RC70 of the European Programme of Work 2020 to 2025, United Action for Better Health in Europe, the regional committee is invited to consider a new proposed measurement framework to monitor the progress made and obstacles encountered in the work on implementing the EPW's three core priorities. A document describing the development of the measurement framework for the EPW and a, re a related draft resolution will also be presented to the Regional Committee for consideration and adoption. And now I would like to give the floor to Regional Director for a brief reflection. Dr. Kluke, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, the European Programme of Work 2020-2025, United Action for Better Health, was adopted last year, September 2020. As you know, it sets priorities for the upcoming years by starting from what the people in the region expect their health authorities to provide. People expect a right to quality health care without fear of financial hardship. People expect better and more effective protection against health emergencies. And people expect to have the ability to thrive in healthy communities that breed healthier populations where public health policies and actions promote well-being for all. In the past year, there have been many achievements with respect to the EPW to be proud of together. So today, I'm very excited to introduce the measurement framework for the EPW, a set of 26 indicators across 16 sustainable development goals, which address each of the core priorities, as well as the four flagship initiatives of the European region. The EPW measurement framework was created in response to the needs of our member states and forms the backbone of data monitoring and evaluation for the Regional Office for Europe. We want to measure progress. The vision for the measurement framework was created and developed during the COVID-19 pandemic, which has highlighted the need for all countries to strengthen their health information systems. The EPW measurement framework is aligned with the frameworks of the 13th Global Programme of Work, the Sustainable Development Goals, and considers the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the entire health system. Most importantly, it includes metrics to monitor progress towards leaving no one behind. But how did we develop such a concise measurement framework when there are 53 countries in the region and more than 900,000 inhabitants? How did we capture the health information challenges of all member states, from the Russian Federation to Monaco? As it turns out, many of these challenges over member states face are similar. The top three challenges faced were, number one, an average time lag of about three years in reporting for many indicators. Three years. Number two, an overburdening of uncoordinated data collection requests from both WHO and other UN and international agencies. Number three, a lack of health data standardization, including definitions, calculations, and data formatting. Over the past nine months, colleagues and experts across the region have collaborated in consultative workshops several times to help us framework to ensure it will not only be useful to the member states, but will reduce the actual burden in data collection and add value to the hard work and dedicated health information system strengthening already taking place both at the country and regional levels. And we want to address these three and other challenges in the coming years. As we all know, timely, 
credible and actionable data are key for evidence-informed planning and policy decisions. We desperately need up-to-date, reliable data in order to facilitate better monitoring of health trends and to forecast future health situations so we can better equip and prepare our health systems to respond to the ever-changing needs of our diverse region. We have already started to partner with some of the small countries in our region, ensuring they are participating in all data collections and ensuring their data are represented correctly across all WHO channels. We look forward to continuing this service and support to all countries throughout the implementation of the measurement framework. Now Natasha will present to you the measurement framework for the EPW and we look forward to hearing your feedback and as always we could not have accomplished this without the support of the member states and I also want to express appreciation to the unit that David, David Novillo is heading in Natasha's division. Thank you. Thank you, Regional Director, and I think that you have uh, given an excellent overview of the framework. So I will be very, very brief, and this is my last presentation for today. And can uh, we have the first slide? Just uh, a few numbers to uh, remind people how we got here. And we got here basically over a period of nine months, um, which was uh, incredible. We could only do this with your support. 39 member states actively contributed. We are privileged to have the input and support of 82 experts over a series of three virtual consultations. And what did this show us? This showed us that the uh, building blocks that we have are good building blocks and they are our starting point. But that it was also important really to take a critical look and see what is really necessary from the building blocks of the GPW 13 framework, the SDG indicators, what is really relevant for the EPW in the European region at this point in time. So in that sense, we organized the uh, framework and we tried really to minimize to a core set of indicators. However, what became very evident was that the EPW has a forward-looking focus and the number of topics that are a priority for us, such as primary health care, mental health, digital health, health effects of climate change, we still as yet do not have the right agreed indicators to be able to measure. And therefore, rather than delaying the adoption of this framework until such time as we have these indicators, with your agreement and support, we came up with what we are calling a development list, a priority development list, which over the coming months, we will continue to work with you through the network that we have established over the course of the consultation in order to really identify which are those minimum set of indicators in these areas where we require further work and how is the best way to develop them. And of course, just having listened to the previous round of interventions also on mental health where a number of countries supported the idea of creating a mental health data lab and emphasized the importance also of measurement, um, we feel that this is uh, the best approach to go forward to fill the gaps that we have always bearing in mind that this should not be an undue or additional burden and we need to be laser focused on really um, collecting those indicators that we need to monitor because they make a real difference and they lead to an impact. So when we talk about frameworks, what is most important ultimately is that this will help us really operationalize our program of work and show us whether we are heading in the right direction, help to identify those areas where we are lagging the behind, and also to understand where more focused action is necessary. Of course, there will be no complete framework and there are still many, many gaps that we need to fill. So the complementary work that we are doing, but we hope to intensify in the coming years, 
is to work with countries to really strengthen the health information systems, riding on the wave of digitalization to strengthen digital health information systems, because again, this is really the key also to reducing the burden of duplicate fragmented data collection. And finally, we also need to be forward looking and we know that we can um, use uh, um, uh, tools and technology such as big data and we need to understand how we can use this data, perhaps parting from the traditional epidemiological methods and rather than giving data at a point in time which is based on collections that have taken place pre-pandemic really coming to a point where we can be anticipating and forecasting what is around the corner so um, uh, back to you madam chair and thank you very much for the opportunity to give this overview Thank you, Dr. Atsopardi. Uh, now, uh, I would uh, like to propose uh, that we suspend this uh, discussion uh, um, of, the, of this particular item tomorrow, beginning uh, at 2 o'clock after lunch. And um, uh, then, uh, for information for tomorrow morning, let me remind you that that we start our day with the private session um, uh, at 9 uh, Central European Summer Time. Representatives of member states, their alternates and their advisors and essential members of the Secretariat are allowed to attend. Other delegates and observers who will attend uh, the public session starting at 10 uh, Central European uh, Summer Time are kindly invited to connect in good time to the Zoom platform and remain in the virtual waiting room until the Secretariat opens the meeting. And uh, we will then take uh, the budget discussion. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank you all on behalf of the President, also on behalf of the President of this regional committee, who is now on her way to Albania, where they will be nominated, the new government. But we wait her to be with us also tomorrow, uh, uh, at least in, in the closing session. Um, and of course, uh, I would like to thank also uh, you and for your active participation today. Uh, and. Uh, uh, my warmest uh, thanks also to all interpreters for their support and perseverance. perseverance. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, I would like to wish you all a lovely evening. Have a good night's sleep also, Secretariat. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and see you tomorrow morning. Close the meeting.